Amen. Can we get somebody on Zoom to lead us in the word of prayer? We got Zoom folks. Let's give a hand for our Zoom folks here. Hey, hey, hey. The volunteer on Zoom leads in prayer. Not a man's past there will do it. <laughs> That's who I was right. going to suggest. Thank you, Bernard. All right. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for these blessings uh, you bestowed upon us. See another day. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your love and kindness, your patience with us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us to the to the other today that, to share your word. Lord, we ask you to speak to every heart and mind, Lord, and Lord, the teacher on every word spoken this day, Lord, let it go into our hearts and to um, and for us to make it a part of our daily lives, Lord, that we come more and more like you. Father, we thank you for all things. We thank you for Calvary. We thank you for eternal life through his name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. I'll send you back to uh, Pastor Daryl talk to us now to raise our faith. And I'll speak about the song, uh, Bridget saying Thursday night, we preaching on uh, uh, accept it, accept tons and accept gold. By the way, we're going to do a round two on that next time I do church. I think I didn't get all, get all the scriptures on that. And y'all know I don't like to be long. You know, trying to keep it in a certain time frame. But I didn't cover those scriptures. So I'm going to go back through that. So Paul said it's not grievous to write the same things that he used again. So I think we just more meat on that bone I want to bring out. But when we talk about that, Brittany had sang the song, Praise Our Faithfulness. And uh, it's really. Uh, Important to recognize that God is going to be faithful to us. You know, I mean, it's just it's an amazing thing. It's just He is faithful. He's there. He's in the corner. He's always there. Even when it seems like in your mind He's not there. And how many of these kids have made it in your mind? Mom and dad just don't love you based on how they handle it. Mom and dad, they just they can't love you. <laughs> and, uh, and your kid, you and later you understand that was love. So we know was love. You know, keeping me in, in, in the room while that party was going on was love. And not getting what I wanted at that time was love. And so later on, we realized that God was with us the whole time. Even when it seemed like we're going through by ourselves, and God just doesn't understand. We realize when we get there, I thank you, Lord, for keeping me from that. I love it for the scripture, first verse, uh, Corinthians 13. It says, One day we will know, even as we are known. So we'll kind of know all the reasons behind things, which is kind of cool. That's why I need to. That's why this thing I was trying to get to destroy me. Oh, I get it now. And the place I was going to go, I was going to lose my life there. I was going to lose it. And, and it turns out some of those no's were no's of love. So uh, in, uh, in, in in preaching this message um, uh, that uh, I did Thursday, God willing, I feel like there's more meat on that bone. And there's a lot of scripture I can cover in the interest of brevity. But I want to go back to and pick up some of that God willing. Next time we speak, Pastor Johnson will speak for us today, and thank God for the household. So All right, so we, we're back in Thessalonians, and it's uh, again one of the unsung books of the Bible. Now there is a chapter, verse, uh, chapter four, which talks about the coming of the Lord, which is the most popular uh, chapter, the most popular verses in Thessalonians, which we'll get to. The rest of the book doesn't get as much credit, I think, as it deserves. Um, so we're going to try to, as we go through the books and these uh, verses, we're going to try to understand everything Paul was saying. And keep in mind that Paul preached in the city, and if you read the tenor, if you read the tenor, the tone of his his writing, it seems like he didn't stay in Thessalonica as long as he wanted to. And, and this is Apostle Paul, so you would think that things would tend to work out spiritually for him. And again, it gets to go to show the humanity of us all. Paul didn't get it done like he really wanted to. Sometimes you don't sound like you really wanted to. You didn't it like you really wanted to. You didn't nail that witness up to like you really wanted to. And, and you think I'm with reality sometimes or relationship with God, but understand that even Apostle Paul I wouldn't stay there longer and you know, I had to go. Things don't work out. But God has the master plan and through faith and obedience and trust you can say, God, my heart was in the right place. As long as your heart was in the right place, God can work the rest of it out. If you just keep your heart in the right place, 
God can work the rest of it. Sometimes the details do not add up like you want to. But make sure your heart doesn't get it. Make sure that you don't change your heart. You didn't get it, get something bad in your heart because God can't operate for you when your heart's in the wrong place. But if your heart is right, your father can make even the worst wrongs turn out your favor. Pastor Dale tell a story. I, I love it if I can borrow it, Pastor. About a, a, an Indian of his, and he was getting promoted, and um, and and his boss wanted to give him a raise, and an Indian of his got very jealous, and mm -hmm. says, uh, "Well, Pastor Darrell, uh, he can't get a raise because he's not left raise to live. This level, he can only get much of a raise. There to be another level of the kind of raise he wants to be qualified. So his boss." Basically said, okay, move him to that next level. <laughs> right? <laughs> and he can't give him the range. So he got, from, he got, and there, and Pastor Darrell used it. That's how God makes your enemy your footstool. That man did not intend to get Pastor Darrell a raise. I'm going to slow it down. Not only did he get the raise, but he caused Pastor Darrell to get moved to the next level to qualify the raise. So when you do the will of God and the right things in your heart and you don't take matters in your hand, now if you want to fight, that's fine. You say, God, give me gloves. You ain't, you ain't doing this quick enough. <laughs> you ain't doing this right. This needs to be done right. Give me gloves, Lord. You can, you can sit in and take a few swings. But I promise it's a lot better if you keep your heart right. And sometimes hold your peace if that's what the Lord dictates. And let the Lord fight your battles. He can handle people a lot better. Even though in your mind at that moment, you think you can handle it right. <laughs> it didn't need to be done right. Let the Lord fight your battles. And see how that works out. Keep your heart right, and God will do what the fathers do. We'll take care of his children. My children do not need to fight. <laughs> my little kids do not need to fight <laughs> if I'm around. So I come to take my little kids. <laughs> you do not need to fight. Get behind daddy. <laughs> it's about to be handled. <laughs> it's about to be handled. Nobody will put a thing on you unless stuff's all out here. And knowing that, that you need me, that's not happening today. God will give me shit to win this battle. Mm. And we do not, as God's little lambs, little children, we need to fight the devil on those kind of terms. We don't need to get in the flesh. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, not fleshly. Even though the flesh feels like it's time to make a move. I've been quiet long enough on this issue. <laughs> I've been long. I got to let it go. They ain't going to know who they're dealing with. Yeah, they're going to see the devil with it. <laughs> and they're going to find out it's a human. We got it. But if God fights with that, who can stand before us? And this is a word of admonition. I just, you know, let go down this line. So somebody needs this. Don't get in the flesh and fight that battle. Um, give, give me 2 Corinthians 10, beginning at verse 3. We just don't follow this pursuit. We're going to try to get that but I got, got to teach on this line. I don't know who the word is for. But somebody came needing this particular meal. But get, get, get in verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh. Okay. We walk in the flesh. Every day we're born in the flesh, right? We get tired, we get angry, <laughs> we get upset, we get emotional. Things bother us. We walk in the flesh. God is not giving us our glorified body yet. Understand why you are like you are. You are fleshly. Doesn't mean you have to give in to the desires, but it means that sometimes this flesh wants to act a fool. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. <laughs> and those of us who are saved, y'all ain't gonna like this. <laughs> Who's the preacher? Y'all ain't ready for me today. Who's the preacher with this wife? Y'all ain't ready for me today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for those of us who are saved, it gets interesting because you haven't acted a fool in a while. <laughs> so you feel a little watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. No. <laughs> 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 I love these preachers. <laughs> a little tired. Because you haven't shown out in a while. And they know that you sit down and take it for a long time. Somebody will say amen. 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 
So when your body's out at the pool, you feel a little justified. <laughs> because you know, they know you don't normally act like this. You know that they know you don't normally act like this. And this is a once a year occurrence. And so I didn't really let it out. Because I've got enough chits over here in the good department. For, when they say heat coming off, they know something's wrong. So that place feeds me. What does the Bible say? <laughs> Somebody's wrong. The Bible is right. <laughs> what does the Bible say? Second Corinthians 10. Pick up freedom. Keep reading. When we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Oh, we don't fight like the world fights. We're in the flesh, but we can't fight like they fight. We can't carry on like carry on. All it takes is one free time. You know how long it takes to build a reputation? Can Tony build a reputation in, 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 in 10 minutes? He can do all good, 10 straight minutes. Don't take it. It's more than one moment. It takes millions of moments for you to finally say, no, 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 Mr. Hall. Oh, she's good. She's a solid. She's good. Nah. She doesn't get that coming in the door. When we say so and so is a good person, I stand high. We uh, we have observed thousands, millions of moments of that person. That situation. I would say, oh, I know that person. He can do that. Somebody tell me, Pastor John, I said, Pastor John didn't do that. You got your people confused. <laughs> I wish Julie was here. He got a uh, he got a uh, uh, he got a doppelganger, a rapper. Looks just like you. I mean, he, he is just an image. And, and he, he has that look, that twinkle. He got it. He got it down. And if he did something, they would have rest out John in a heartbeat. Like, if he did, I don't know, only something he's not at you. Somebody came and said, Pastor, I said, I said, you got the wrong thing. Pastor, I said, this is all I that. I know them. Why? Because Not because I just met them. It took one moment. Because I observed over here for faithfulness. Oh, no, no. No, you got your people wrong. I can see by it. So it takes years and millions of moments to build a reputation. But how long does it take to destroy a reputation? Isn't that the great parent, one of the great paradoxes of life? Years to build trust. You can trust in a minute. That's your con person. But it takes one minute. Why in life is it so much easier to destroy something than to build something? Because you still got flesh. Yeah, thank you. The flesh is there. But that's the paradox. Take this building, for example. If you start from scratch and build this building, it would take you months, I guess. But, but if you wanted to destroy it and you had a fool, then you probably do it in a day. People, there are people in politics, for example, who go 20 years with a good, solid track record. Everything is right. One day, they answer the wrong question the wrong way at the wrong time. And that 20 years of doing the right thing and trying to be the right type of person goes out the window because. Here's what he said, or here's what she said. And if you look at their track record, they are not like that. They are not uh, racist. They're not sexist. They're not hateful. But in that one moment, they use a term or something. And somebody counts. And now it's all over there. And now so-and-so is a racist. So-and-so is a sexist. So-and-so. Is this and that because they see it the wrong? But you look at that track record. I didn't name any names here because it's universally applicable. It's all over and they get canceled. 20 years of doing the right thing. One slip up at a mic. And their reputation takes a irretrievable downward turn. It's so much easier to destroy than to be. Now, I remember witnessing somebody who got caught in that. I'm not naming any names. 
And then with the mic, just look at exasperated. Look at my track record. What, does this represent? I was wrong. I turned this. I wasn't trying to, but I said it wrong. I, but look at my track record. Nope. <laughs> you said this. And, nothing, and, 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 and really, that was pretty much the end of that, that for them. You know, it's just, just canceled. I say that to mind, she's bleeding. You don't get entitled to that moment of going off. You do it. We do it. I do it. But you're not entitled to it because of your reputation. Because that's what's going to destroy you. That's why it's, it's, it's especially uh, even the world says the, the, the 10 second rule. Before you say something, wait 10 seconds or, or, or go out of the as a believer. As a believer, even more so because their souls at stake. So we walk in the flesh, but we don't, we don't war, we don't handle stuff the way the world handles it. We walk in the flesh, but when something comes up, we don't war after the flesh. We don't go to battle. I'm not, I'm not gonna go toe to toe with you. And how do I do it? Here? Go ahead. Let me break this first. For the weapons of our warfare. What I use to fight, it's not this. What I use to fight is not that. And this is our weapon of choice. We're dangerous of that. That's you more than a fist. Now, I don't care what Chris Rock says. Song hurt you worm way more than a slap. What I say about you behind your back can hurt you, hurt you way more than a physical lick, than a slap. This song can mess you up for years. Why have you said that about me? You can get over a slap. We get into it and you slap me. I get over that. He said, what about me to who? The words go in deep. We don't war with this, obviously. But we're not supposed to war with this either. That's for me too. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, not fleshly. Not the sukiyas. What are they? What are they? Read. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Well, what I use is something mighty. It'll pull down the stronghold. It'll break down racism. It'll break down hatred. It'll break down sexism. It's a, it'll break down those who hate me for being a believer and, 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 and a good at two shoes. It'll break down People who hate me because I'm a mirror. It, it will break down people who have something against me because I'm a woman. It will break down strongholds in people's minds. What weapon? Tell me a little bit more about it. Mighty God to put down strongholds. What, 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 what else will we do? Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. If I fight right, I can change what's in your mind. God can do it. You may think this about me. You may think that about me. But if I fight right, the Bible says the weapon I use will cast down those imaginations. It'll make you think right for certain things. And bring you into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. God, will make you think right. Make your enemy think right. Every thought. Concerning you. So you should think this Amen. about it. Pray about it. Talk to your father about it. And God, touch that mind. And then begin to think different about you. Give God hand praise. So we're trying to go to scrap and we're going Hebrews 4 for 12. Anybody? When the word of God is quick. Okay, time out. What's this weapon we use? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sword. It's a sword. <laughs> The word of God is quick. It means it's alive. God, 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 don't speak on him. His word coming out 
about now from time to time, right? Talking. But God don't speak no ordinary word. <laughs> when you are speaking the word of God, God is an ordinary being. <laughs> No ordinary being. You know, we said a commercial when he had, he had Pentecost people listen. <laughs> you know, they had that commercial. Some of y'all not only remember this. But there was a stockbroker, and he would give stock advice. And the company's name is Ian Putt. I don't think they, I don't think they exist anymore. <laughs> but the commercial was so, so when my broker is Ian Putt, that's where the commercial would go. And when and Ian Putt says, and the whole room will go quiet, people will listen. <laughs> See what Ian Putt says. <laughs> Let me see how God operates. <laughs> when the Lord speaks, it's no ordinary words that come out of his mouth. God explained to Isaiah, the words from my mouth, they don't come back empty. <laughs> he said, just like the rain rains on the earth and causes the flowers to grow. So is the word that goes out of my mouth. It shall accomplish whatever I said it to do. In other words, you and I talk, but God sends his word to accomplish things. What does quick mean? A lie. Read that verse again. The word of God is what? For the word of God is quick. It's a lie. <laughs> it's no ordinary words. God's word is a lie. We don't understand it. God's word is a lie. They go do things. <laughs> According to God, they accomplish whatever purpose he sent his word. The Bible says Jesus sent his word here. It's no ordinary word. It's, these words come out of my mouth. We can't see them. We can't feel them. It's here. The words about God's mouth are alive. So we said, let there be light. We don't know what light was, but it came running. God's word was infection. <laughs> And when Jesus told Lazarus, get up, come forth, his words would infect Lazarus. Come on, get up, get up. The word of God is quick, alive, and what? And powerful. Powerful. And mm -hmm. sharper than any two-edged sword. It's sharp. Read. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It's not only a sword, but it's a razor. God heard. It can chop you like this, but it's razor thin to divide. You don't have to change knives, the word of God. It can be a sword or a back in two, then it can be a razor to separate the bone from the Ordinary word. Read. Piercing even to the dividing asunder, soul and spirit, and a joy is a discerner of the thought, the intent. The word can examine your heart and determine what you look at in your heart. You did this, but your heart was here. You did the wrong thing, but your heart was. You need the right thing, everybody can see it, but we're here. So the word of God is a lie that can examine the thoughts and intent of your heart, and God can evaluate you on that. So what's this, what's this weapon we use? What weapon we use? Let's go to Ephesians 6 before we wrap it up. Ephesians 6. I make no apologies for it, not getting it that long as the one I'm learning. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Let's go to Ephesians 6. <laughs> we can't win the battle of the flesh, y'all. I don't know who all needed this or who or my person needed this, maybe multiple. Pastor John did a beautiful lesson on this passage a few months ago. Still on Zoom. The weapons brought a warfare. Yeah, fully. Uh, the, uh, and the slides, the visuals were so good. I still remember the visuals, the soldiers. Uh, this is a little Zoom somewhere if y'all uh, get an opportunity to go back and look at this. I don't know what the title is called. But, but, it, but it includes lessons for it. About warfare. Let's begin verse 2. Can I get a, can I get a Zoom reader? 
I can pick, pick up Ephesians 6, verse 10. But no, I keep on the draft too. Is he there? Give me a brother. I don't have my uh my uh phone out right now. If somebody could put it on the screen, I can read it. Okay, can we, can we do that? I can't share this one. Close on this. Okay. Okay. Ephesians uh, sixteen. Start with ten. Ephesians six. What verses? Read, read, just Starting read straight ten. through 10, and then give me, uh, read down to verse 18. Just read it straight through. <laughs> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand an evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you should be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You have an overview there. And I encourage you to go back and look at Pastor John's lesson. Get, get the next day. You see the sword. You see it's not walking in the flesh. You see the praying. Our cheap weapons, some faith. You go back, and we need to. I'll try to find it and put it out on the church yet. But this is how you fight. This is what you're on with prayer, faith, the word of God. You're a saint. You're not, the, you're not a child. You're the saint. You're the light in the dark place. There's a reason there's darkness there. You're supposed to bring the light. I want us all close uh, in Isaiah 55 where God talks about the word. I want everybody that's got a Bible to turn this past y'all read it. We need to understand who our God is. Who is this that's with us? Who is this that's on our side now? Who's kid with us? Who's walking with us? We just, just understand. Yes. Just understand who he is. Yes. And, and let's let's see the uniqueness of his character. The uniqueness. Of his strength, the uniqueness of his power. Here's what he said about himself. This is where we close today. This is the Lord Himself talking. I love it when John describes how God is, and Paul describes how God, David describes how God is. But when God describes how God is, I just kind of, <laughs> I said, I'm like, oh man, <laughs> it's a whole other another thing. <laughs> so here's what God Himself said about Himself. Isaiah 65. Beginning verse 6. I'll stop reading. I'll stop, stop reading. I'll give it to you. Pastor John, Pastor, open comments for me just a minute. Isaiah 65. Six. I just soak it in. Just, just soak this in, Father. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You still got a chance. 
you got a chance to get it right. You got a chance to, you got a chance to be that believer God had in mind in the first place. Seek you the Lord while the baby found him. Call upon him while he's He's yet saved. He's yet in the yet. Ears and yet open your prayers. Call upon him while he's living. You still got an opportunity. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Oh, I love it. Thank you. He will abundantly pardon. You, your mess ain't too messy for the Lord. It ain't deep for the Lord. I don't care how much my kids made a mess in their diaper and whatever too stinky for a mother's love. Even daddy had to leave the room. <laughs> they never got too stinky for my feet. One time, I found myself saying, Woo! <laughs> for a mother's love. Not one time. And I'm saying, your mess is never too messy for a God of this unparalleled. He will abundantly pardon. Your big stuff will abundantly pardon. Now, the Lord begins to talk. Isaiah's done well. But here's what I love, Bruce. The Lord begins to talk here. <laughs> For my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is the Lord talking. Neither are how you do things, how I do things, saith the Lord. <laughs> your ways are not my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than yours. I've got to understand. <laughs> I know the right way to look at this thing. Yeah. My thoughts are high. I've got this thing. I had to figure out before you were even born. Yes. Before eternity was, I am. Yes. I got this. When I look at this thing, that's not how you look at it. I allow it. I understand the benefit to you and the kingdom about this thing. My thoughts are the Lord. My ways are not so high. Two things. It's on a greater level. I may be able to see it. You have to trust it. For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and it doesn't go back up, the rain rains down, you don't see the snow hitting back up. You don't see the rain hitting the ground and going back up. We know that doesn't make any sense that it finds that this belongs to ground. We know that. That rain doesn't come back up. Snow the ground doesn't come back up. We know that. And God uses that to teach us this. Just like the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and doesn't return, but waters the earth and make things bring forth in bud, cause grass to grow, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. It has an effect. It waters. It causes things to grow. In the end, we get bread. <laughs> we don't think about bread when we see rain. But God does. <laughs> we don't think about bread when we see snow. The snow melts. It turns into water. It cultivates some plants. The plants grow. We get to see. Nobody thinks about bread and butter. But God has a way to understand it. We just see rain and snow. He sees bread and butter for his children. <laughs> he just thinks on a whole different level. Just one little example of how he understands what we don't understand. Then he says, just the way that rain and snow comes down and, and, and has some effect, he says, so also, so shall my word be which will out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty. It doesn't come back to me. I please and shall prosper the thing where it's unsaid. If I say your body is healed, my word is not going to come back. If I say you can deliver, you shall stand. God's word is not going to come back to him and say, we tried, God. But we 
We couldn't live down. The devil was too powerful. The was too powerful. That principle was too strong. That superintendent was too willful. God says, my word never come back to me like that. When I send you a word, it accomplishes what I send it to you. And I don't let it prosper. It don't just resolve the issue. It'll bless afterwards. So I'm not, you're not only going to get the raise, but now you're going to get an exalted position. I'm going to prosper you in it. That's where my word works when I say it. And it never comes back again. That's part of this. He tells his people, Israel here, this case, for ye shall go out with joy. Keep in mind, Israel is a hard place. The enemy is all around the bow. And God said, just know this. Right? It's in a hard place. Underfoot from his enemies. No sovereignty. All the heathens run now. So God says, I'm going to give you a word now. <laughs> and you rejoice on his word. This is my word. You have to look at your situation, where your enemies are, and where you stand. Just to say, you got a word now. So you can rejoice because my word. <laughs> It's better than the substance. What I say is going to happen, it's, 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 it's even better than happening. Because you live to see it. <laughs> you shall go out with joy. See, in the ground, my people, you shall go out with joy. That's enough for everyone to be dancing. It's like, why are you dancing? We got to go out. God said, I'm going out with joy. <laughs> we, got to, we, got to put them, we got to put them down. Put them out. Why? God has told them, go to it. That means it ain't going to work out for you so well. <laughs> <laughs> I will deliver these. Yes. Not to stop it. The shell grow with joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth. I'll make the mountains break forth. <laughs> I'll make the rock proud. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Sometimes you hear the, the, the wind rustling the trees, the trees. God said they can't come back. <laughs> They're giving God a praise. <laughs> the wind blows, God is letting go. He's a tree. Okay. That's what this great God is. Amen. To the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and to the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be unto the Lord a name. What look like it was going to be something bad, God will make something good. I can be thorn, it's a fir. I can be briar, it's a myrtle tree. It's, it looked like it was a weed, but God turned into a flower. That situation was a game. Beauty for ashes. Lord says, and it shall be to the Lord for a name. God will get the glory out of it. He'll do it for his glory. Wow. For an everlasting sign that shall not be cut up. I... <laughs> That's God's word. Amen. God's word for you is good. God's word. Body me. If you, if you just body me. And my word. What you will shall be. If I can't pray for the word, Pastor John and Pedro, comments. Everybody here on Zoom. We still in First Thessalonians next Sunday. We start off honestly with the text of Debbie. We'll pick up. <laughs> Pastor John and Pedro, put it on you. Pastor Daryl. First of all, beautiful lesson today, and I have a lot of comments which I'm going to reclaim this time another day. <laughs>
Beautiful. Lesson. You will hear it from me. Yeah. yeah. I got Father God, in Jesus' name, we're so God, help us to walk in faith, your word, God. Help us not work with flesh. Help us not cheat by our facts. Help us use the weapon you gave to fight with God. Help us not put the bow and arrows you gave us down, choose our own. <laughs> Help us to not use our weapons, but your weapons, God. The weapons of our warfare are not called, but my dear God. Help us to just walk in faith and into your word, God, and to win this war your way. Thank you. The victory is ours. Let's trust. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.